Welcome, everyone. Um, thank you for joining us uh, today's webinar. And my name is Raj, and I'm um, the community innovator at Sustainable Living Lab Indonesia. At Sustainable Living Lab, um, we develop innovative solutions for community and organizations that want to grow sustainably. Today, we are presenting Waste from Home Management Strategy, presented by um, Ranitya Nolita. So when we talk about uh, waste management and waste from home, it's not just about uh, your daily waste at home, but about um, the general waste that uh, what um, I think one of our participants also uh, concerned in um, waste management issues in Singapore, like uh, she mentioned before. So uh, we will talk about uh, waste management issues and also how we can um, take some initiative from home, like what we can do as, um, yeah, as a person. So um, also um, we will introduce Medan Makers um, community. So uh, Medan Makers will present their Katot Smart Bin. So as their response in contribute in solving uh, waste issues in Medan. So also I have one more important information that uh, we will announce our newest program for, uh, from Sustainable Living Lab in collaborations with National um, Institute of Technology, uh, Warangal, India. So uh, we are collaborating in uh, Futures Plus program, our newest program in um, community innovation with Foresight. So please stay tuned till the end because uh, it will be uh, interesting talking about our waste management issues and then we also will introduce our made and makers and then the, our community program. So um, just a little housekeeping uh, before we get started. If you have any questions uh, during the presentations, uh, please type them up uh, in the questions box in your Zoom uh, control panel, and I'll bring them up um, at the end of the session. And also our speaker today is Tranitya Nolita, like uh, what I mentioned before, and she is the founder of Waste Solution Hub and ASEAN Reusable Plastic Bay Campaign. And today, uh, she also nominated as the finalist in the Inno Days 2020. I have congratulations, Ranitya, for your success in Inno Days, and I'm so proud of you. And unfortunately, uh, uh, she's not able to join at this time, so uh, she sent us a recorded version of her presentations. But she will join us uh, later uh, at the end of the session. So if you have any questions, uh, don't hesitate to type them up because uh, she will free to answer your questions at the end. Hi, good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining this webinar. Uh, my name is Lita. Um, thank you for Sustainable Living Light for inviting me for this session, sharing sessions. So, um, and also welcome to everyone to joining these webinars from around the world, from Indonesia, from India, from Singapore, and everywhere. Yeah, right now, uh, I will share about my experience and also what we can do to handle our waste during COVID-19 and specifically for our waste management in our home. Okay, I will share the slide. Yeah. Before starting, I will share about a little bit about my background. Um, I'm focused for environmental issues since um, 2011 by joining some organizations such as um, sustainable development and then focus for waste management, climate change, social entrepreneurship, and about event management. And then um, I also have opportunity to travel across the country to represent Indonesia, to share about environmental issues. And then also um, since 2015, uh, I've become president Hello Green Community and lead in 18 cities around Indonesia. And then 2015, I met my community named ASEAN Reusable by Campaign and then since last year, I focus for waste management and I make a social business, namely Waste Solution Hub. And also for this year, I focus for uh, Rumah Millennials. So it's like youth organization to focus for youth movement. My activity daily during COVID-19 is, yeah, I work remote in Thailand, in Energaya. It's a spirulina company. 
and then beside that i also yeah before that i told you i mean i made way solution hub and then also focus for rumah millennials uh, this is a little bit about my journey in environmental issues this is for my international experience and also this is for organization experience so i start environmental community or organizations in 2011 and then i joined youth for climate change indonesia community and then i made my own community or organizations and then 2018 i made um board game environmental board game to educate people raise awareness to reducing plastic bag and also ask them to more aware about the environment and change their mindset change their habit for green lifestyles yeah i will tell you later for more details yeah right now we will talk about waste management and then how we handle our waste so this is very uh, unique um, title maybe because the comedy from Mazalas asked me to uh, WFH or work from home, but uh, actually we will talk about waste from home. Yeah, this is, I will share about a little bit about management strategy for waste during COVID-19. Yeah, um, this is, I will tell you about a little bit before about us and the Sable Bay campaign. So this is my initiative. So I got funding grant from United Department of State. And then this project is to reduce plastic bag in Southeast Asian countries. So we started in 2015 in Indonesia, Malaysia, and the Philippines. So we aim to raise awareness about environmental protections, to reduce the use of plastic bags, and to promote the use of reusable bags. Since 2015, we already um, produce around 7,549 bags, reusable bags, and we already educate around 10,000 people in Indonesia, Malaysia, and the Philippines, something like that. And after that, 2017, 2018, uh, I made board game. The name is Sahabat Alam. So our goal of Sahabat Alam is about, we want to make environmental board game and focus for raise awareness about environmental lifestyles and then for conscious living. So we made together with some organizations such as um, Replay Indonesia, is the board game community and then Zero Height. Zero Height is the board game designer. So um, we already, this is our prototype. And actually for this year, we will um, produce is around um, hundreds reusable bags, but because COVID-19, so we hold the productions. So I hope that uh, everyone who know and everyone who want to um, help us, actually this is in Bahasa, so if, if everyone interests to translate into English or another languages, we are very welcome for that. Yeah, and then um, this is why I made and why uh, my team and I make some of a uh, movement because um, I'm back to my country, Indonesia, is more, more about 267 million population in the world. And then um, this very huge, actually. And then we think that this um, really big. And then we should to know about the waste problems. Yeah, Indonesia, we produce more than 64 million ton of waste annually. And this is if we compare with the um, Evil Towers, Indonesian waste equal to 6,400 evil towers and it's not evil towers but it's a uh, waste and if we know together and maybe everyone know that indonesia is the second largest waste plastic pollutant in the world after china and since 2015 and then i'm thinking that we should do something to not number second again and then this also in jakarta actually because i live around two years in Jakarta and then live five years in Bogor in the West Java near Jakarta. In Jakarta is more than 
10.5 million populations, and per day we produce 7,800 tons of waste every day. And if we not um, separate our waste, or if we not, we just throw away. Uh, tomorrow, 7,800 ton of waste will come again in only in Jakarta. And also in Indonesia, we have around more than 1,000 waste collection area managed by government, but not all, not all the 1,000 is active. So this is uh, the problems in Indonesia and also in Jakarta. So that's why um, I'm thinking that we should do something to my country and maybe in your country because actually waste is every um, is our problems together. <laughs> And in Indonesia, if we know that per people, per person, uh, we produce uh, 0 0.5 kilograms per day, and it's, it's big. And we just calculate with the total amount of million population in Indonesia, 267. And then per people, we produce 0 0.5, it's many. <laughs> So this is our problem also in Jakarta actually. Um, waste precursors play a critical role in municipal solid waste management. And they live in around 300 until 500 square meters. It's really small. And then, um, yeah. And then in the house, they have eight, four until eight family members. And they only graduate in elementary schools, uh, it's sad, and then they don't have ID country card, and then uh, they earn around yeah thirty five until seventy um, dollars per month, and per day they only earn around three until five dollars per month, and some of them also besides as well speakers they also become porter, beggar, housework, and yeah to stay alive. So this is, is very hard to tell, but this is our problem, maybe in Indonesia and also in Southeast Asian countries. So that's why with Solution Hub coming. So we want elevate and establish effective and responsible local waste collections area through circular economy and technology approaches because we want everyone, we want uh, waste speakers and any stakeholders who focus on waste management handle their weight. So this is what we do. We are consult. We, we try to consult. We are uh, consultants and then because we're providing best practice knowledge to improve waste collection area in other occasions and then we also create, we create more systematic, integrated and sustainable waste management with ICT or technology approaches. And then we also want to empower, so we provide additional opportunities and soft skills to increase their life. It's mean that waste speakers. And then also um, we build a proper sanitation and then um, facilities also. So we also support um, SDGs number 12 and also 13 because uh, for sustainable consumption and productions and also climate actions. And this is some of our services. Uh, you can see the first one is for um, food and organic recycling. Uh, you can see that. And then we, so the food and organic waste recycling, um, because I will tell you later that more than 50% in Indonesia or maybe around the world, um, many of organic waste. And then we also provide plastic waste recycling. So we manage end-to-end -end plastic process to add sustainable value for the event. And also, uh, I told you before, we are consulting. So we, we try to um, make and provide consultation for least waste or even zero waste events. And because every event or every um, uh, service that we help, we always involve with speakers. So that's why we also have with speakers intensive training because to provide additional opportunities and uh, their income. And during, uh, actually, Waste Solution Hub, we just established last year, 2019. And Alhamdulillah, um, around this one, you can see around 1,200 more waste speakers already empowered in Jurang Mangu. Jurang Mangu is 
in Jakarta area, nearby Jakarta. And then we also educate participants or visitors around 23,169 plus participants. And we also uh, involve the volunteers around 60. And the waste not go to the landfill or waste have been recycled around 2.4 tons. Yeah, this is our impact during um, since August. Yeah, since last year. And this is the fact that we know. I uh, actually and this is in Bahasa. So some of the some of my presentation will also be in Bahasa. So I will translate in English. So you can see that organic things. This one, the organic is around fifty one percent of waste. Yeah, this is the calculation when we handle the event waste management event. And this is also is more than 35% of uh, organic waste. So if we handle our organic waste, actually we can solve 50% of the problem of waste. So the problem is how we handle that organic waste. Yeah. So yeah, we should you know that also. This is the uh, Indonesia again. We are largest largest food wasters per year after Saudi Arabia. Yeah per around 300 kilograms. So of course, food waste, including organic waste, many. <laughs> and this is uh, some of facts during Ramadan, uh, because right now we, we are in Ramadan months. So this is our problems before and maybe during COVID. Um, yeah, during Ramadan, online food delivery is everywhere <laughs> in Indonesia. And we said that also, yeah. This is also for food in Ramadan, in also another uh, Muslim countries. Um, the percentage of um, organic waste, they increase around 10 until 15%. It's many. And maybe some of the country also increase their uh, waste around 30%. And also this is another fact. Uh, in Indonesia cultures, uh, we, before we eat, um, eat the uh, iftar or breakfasting, uh, we eat snacks and then uh, meals, yeah, for sweet or something. So yeah, this is some of the facts. And you can see here many plastic. Oh my god! Even the spoon, even the the cover, they use plastic. This is the problems. And this is the unique thing when I when I see in the some of the information or the news, uh, the facts during COVID nineteen. Because yeah, this happily if I earth, I'm be happy because because social distancing has improved air quality. Why air quality? Because everyone is back to their home, back to their house, and then they not go out for maybe shopping or go somewhere. So that's why this for me, I'm happy because no pollution again. And this is the unique fact that in Indonesia in Jakarta actually. The Jakarta's air quality has been classified as good since the last 28 years. After 28 years, you can see in the left side and in the right side. Uh, so in the right side is the, the normal, but in the left side is not normal. I mean, during COVID-19, the, the air quality is very clear. So happy. <laughs> And then this is also, during COVID-19, we also reduce carbon emission and global warming. Yeah. And then beside that also, this is for waste problems. Uh, before I talk about air pollution, and then right now I'm talking about um, factoring COVID-19 in Jakarta also. And this is about the waste. So during um, COVID-19, Jakarta daily trash output is decreased by over 40%. Because normally I told you before that we produce more than 7,800 ton of waste. So right now uh, they reduce and decrease around 620 tons daily. So it's mean like only around 7,000 waste um, went to landfill. This is better than before because everyone is back to their home. And then, sadly, this is the fact of waste pickers. And then, this is not only waste pickers that we manage. And when when our waste pickers partners, this is also waste pickers maybe around the world. Because when I uh, get information from break uh, break free from plastics, this is the the cases 
in yeah in India in India because most of um, base speakers is marginalized and they'll also during COVID-19 they are very hard to find the food so actually because West speakers is informer economy and they are really particularly vulnerable to this crisis yeah this also happened it's not only in India but also this is Indonesia um, during COVID-19 the West speakers actually the whole West speakers in Indonesia is from 3.7 million way speakers and we just only empower around 1200 things yeah the problem is same um their income is very very decreased it's more than 70 percent when we talk with them um this is very sad so yeah we should help them because why they can they cannot get ways they cannot go to the um our area because everyone is physical distancing so this is the problem for the west speakers and the west speakers they have very big role and a good role for our waste aggregations and then this also sadly everything increased actually for single-use plastic that i saw you before like during ramadan many plastic many sterile foam and some of the studies state about um, the virus, COVID-19 virus can live up to 24 hours on paper, cardboard, fabrics, compared up to 72 hours on plastic and everything. And besides that also, this is, is very sad because everyone, they use um, safety equipment, actually we call it APD, yeah, or health equipment for the uh, doctors, nurse, so the waste for um, that, I mean, like the waste for medical equipment is increased, including gloves, masks, sanitizers, containers, and every, um, yeah, um, for the equipment, this that. And this, our problem, how to solve it, right? Yeah. And we should you know this, the unique things. You, I told before, I told you before that, um, um, the waste volume is decreased is around yeah forty percent, but in our um, home it's increased. I got uh, this uh, data from my friend Hijab Purnama. Hijab Purnama also a member of this is the uh, the data from him. Um, he said that for organic waste is increased around um, sixteen point seven percent, and for all the ways this is the normal conditions only um, 0 0.4 and then during work from home we increase 0 0.5 it's mean that we have we increase 37.5 percent wow uh, i hope that's true um for me it's true because i also feel like that and yeah I hope that when I tell you so many problems before, after, or maybe during COVID-19, we also thinking that we should be, be good. I feel that we should do something to our earth because we hope that the earth and us after pandemic will be better than before. Yeah. And then uh, before I tried some of tip of waste management in home, uh, we should to know about a little bit about circular economy. Um, this circular economy is um, happening in, in European countries. And then, yeah, uh, basically for the information, uh, we can see from this graphics. So this is our waste. So uh, normally in Indonesia, we separate two types. The first one is organic waste. And then the second one is for unorganic waste or maybe another materials. So um, for organic or biological materials, we can do and we can um, um, not recycle, but we can process for the, another organic process for technical materials. So we can recycle. So I will tell you about a little bit about biological materials. So the process after become organic waste, we can process after that to be maybe farming, restoration, biogas, and aerobic digestion or composting and then after we can do everything we just we can put them but actually for bio, bio 
logical materials or organic waste it's very simple to handle if we have lens or maybe if we have something in our home but for technical materials is it's more about plastics and then um batteries and then um papers actually we should um recycle or we should um separate um segregate the waste like for plastic for plastic and then for paper for paper so so that's why the recycle refurbish reuse and maintenance is very important for circular economy and of that after we process all the biological materials and then process all the technical materials the the lastly waste uh, we call it um residual waste so just go to the landfills so maybe if we process um very good it's not more than one or two percent because the waste is an in our home yeah something like that so this is the the framework of circular economy we should know about this so this is the lastly so maybe in incinerators but incinerators for me is i'm not really great for incinerators because the the quality of air uh, so the last is landfill, but if we can manage our waste in our home, it's very less. Maybe we not can. Maybe we we not produce waste because we collect and we reuse and we recycle everything. So um, this is I tell you about trippy concept uh, because like me, I'm handle business, social business. So when I make profit, I still thinking about planet and people. So this is like my mindset and also my team mindset. So we should think about that. So this is how to do and maybe some recommendation here yeah, um, for you, for everyone who listen my webinars. The first one is buy the right things. So yeah, women, they like shopping. <laughs> and then women, they like um, buy everything she like or maybe, yeah. So during Ramadan uh, in Indonesian tradition, we buy the new clothes. Actually, we don't need to buy because I still have um, clothes and maybe I have some of trousers, hijab, everything. So before before we produce waste, we should also thinking about buy the right things because uh, right now it's also happening about fast fashions. Yeah, we just use one time and then we throw away and then in the end it will be the landfill. This is also the problems. And then this is how to do the another step is yeah you can see there. We can bring your own shopping bags and um, me and also my friends and my team in Southeast Asian countries, we have campaign that I told you before about ASEAN reusable bag campaign. And then we also ask them, I hope that you can bring your own cup and then use reusable water bottle, use reusable straws, but actually I'm not used straw, so I'm just drinking the water in the glasses. <laughs> and then use glass jars and, and then your bring your own lunch box, bring your own cutlery, and then, yeah, use bamboo to dress. This is just very simple that you can do every day. But um, before that, uh, for my Muslim friends, during iftar or brick fasting, you also can not use plastic or maybe, yeah, you can use your um, glass cup. And yeah, it's very easy. And then this is some of my tips. So even you stay at home, you can also try at home. Why? Why and how to try at home? This is some of my um, suggestion. The first one is about waste segregation. So we should thinking and we should try to um, segregate our waste. It means that for plastic with plastic, organic with organic, and then batteries with batteries, metal with metal, glass with glasses, paper with paper. So maybe we have many bins in our home, but it's okay because we want to change our mindset. We want to change our behaviors. We want to change our, and we want to the earth little uh, good uh, because we not live in this time also. We also have the future of children, right? Yeah, and this is actually in Bahasa, but actually the same with the previous. Yeah, and then beside that, also try to make organic organic compost. Yeah, this is actually in Bahasa again. <laughs> so yeah, I will tell you about a little bit about organic compost. Yeah, organic compost is um, in Indonesia. We have many methods. Uh, the first one is for aerob and anaerob. So aerob or anaerob. The first one 
uh, IROP is is more about you you should put some of the the materials so you can see here the materials so the brown the brown the brown materials and then the green materials and then um, not a lot materials so the brown is mean like you can put like leaves the the brown leaves and then yeah maybe um vegetables something like that for the green wine you can put vegetables also but for the leaves and then um fruits and then also tea or coffee and then maybe some fertilizers from um chicken and also from the coal or maybe the poops of, of that but it's we should to put that and you can try for compost and then for the anaerobic so we have we should have three type of materials or ingredients and then for anaerobic i use this in my home so anaerobic is, is more about we don't need to think about the materials or the ingredients because we can put everything there but this for only organic don't don't put plastic there it's not allowed <laughs> So um, the output of an aerobic an aerobic compost is um, liquid liquid com liquid compost and also a dry compost. So depend on you which one you like. And then besides, I also try in Indonesia we call it uh, this in Bahasa or yeah in Javanese languages we call it jeglongan or jeglongan is like you it's like a farm. Um, you take take out your um, the land, uh, how to say, tanah, something like that. So just um, put the land and then put everything, the organic, in the in the circles. I will tell you later for this one, or we call it a biopori. So you can see, so the deep of the biopori is around 80 until 100 um, centimeters. So you can put everything organic with in there. So like this. Uh, the the biopori things and then uh, beside uh, we made organic um, compost and then make biopori or maybe another method for organic uh, we can try to make our own food of course it's fun and then beside that we try to buy and support local products because why um, local products so we don't need to ship uh, worldwide because like if we buy not local product we should go um the the carbon footprint is very high yeah and then we should try to less water it's very it's very good and it is my recommendation for the muslim don't need don't use your water um highly like for voodoo or for ablations because yeah we should save the water and then beside that, we should also less electricity, like turn off the lamp if we don't need to use. And then we can take out the electricity, like when I'm not charged my phone, I just put like this. I just take out from the terminals, something like that. And then uh, I've also used online classes for environmental things because I'm very like environmental things, information. So I join also some online classes like for climate change, energy, environmental constraints, and also like health worker programs because I also um, empower with speakers and we should also thinking about their health. And then uh, this is another question as maybe this is your question also. After we segregate our waste, like plastic with plastic, paper with paper, so what's next? Yeah, this is my recommendation. So after we segregate our waste, I believe that in your countries or in your areas, uh, you have waste bank or recycling center. Just go there. Go there, bring your own waste after COVID-19, of course. <laughs> so like me in my house. So I asked my mom to segregate uh, waste. Uh, so my mom have uh, many of plastic um, plastic bottles. So I asked mom, just keep it. Um, and after that, if you have many, just go to recycling center and sell it. This is very easy, right? And then if you like um, farming, you can try for urban farming. And then this related with your, if you like um, cooking, you can make your own food. 
So um, beside that also, this is the lastly option. You can try for EcoBricks. EcoBrick is, um, we try to make um, the, the residual waste. It's like a sachet or something, not use any, again, right. So, but this is the last option. But the first option that we should reduce everything. We should try to reduce everything about the waste. And this is uh, some of tips. Um, this is the tips I got from break from plastic uh, because we right now we talk about not only waste but also stakeholders who involved in waste management. It means that waste pickers. So um, break from plastics. This um, this in India recommendations. Uh, they have some of the tips. The first one is, is be civil to waste collectors and then tell them you know their condition. Give them dry ration to cook. Give them soap. Uh, hand over dry waste without syrup. Segregate your waste. Of course, I asked you before to segregate your waste with compost and also uh, co uh, segregate another waste like plastic and everything. And then talk to your neighbor to help them, of course. So what they did also with Solution Hub did. Uh, so during around two months, we already handled donation package. So we made... Um, we made rations to cook. It's like including rice and then um, noodles and then some of the ration cooked. So we already deliver 1,541 um package. The package is around um, $8, something like that. And then for the next one to three months, we will deliver around 1,550 um ration cook and this increase always so right now we help them we uh for resolution help we little bit change our business model so for during two or three months we focus for our best speakers because i told you that we have 1222 way speakers we handled in jurang mangu yeah we should do that and also this is tip for the consumer it means us so I told you before that we should maybe, yeah, shopping at the box store or shop with the refill models. So we can go to the local, local stores. And then you can bring your own container from that. When you buy something, uh, use your own containers, go to the box store and put all the food to your own container. And beside that, you, you also can support informal workers that I told you before, it's like with speakers, and then using reusable shopping bag, something that I told you before, and then also responsible with um, your products and also your formal waste collection system, and also try to do for uh, circular economy. Yeah, uh, I also have tip for the uh, medical waste. Uh, this is, is very important. So I will show you the, the video for this. Wait a minute. So this is video. Um, wait. Wait a minute. I will show you the video how to handle our medical waste. Yeah, this one. This is in Barata. So yeah, I will speak. I will in later. I will show you. Berikut ini saya akan berbagi tips bagaimana cara membuang sampah masker bekas yang aman. Pertama, lipat bagian dalam masker seperti ini. Yang kedua, gunting masker dan putuskan talinya. Tujuannya adalah agar si masker ini tidak digunakan oleh orang lain seperti ini. Masker ke dalam bungkus yang aman, misalkan bekas plastik kemasan. Tutup plastik kemasannya dengan selotip, misalkan, atau dengan karet. 
buang masker bekas yang telah dibungkus pada tempatnya. Oke, okay, yeah, this is little bit my sharing about how we handled our medical waste. So, lastly, I will share again this one. Yeah, so we should also um, segregate our medical waste. Uh, it means like the mask. So first one, we should um, cut the mask and then we should put in the paper or maybe another something like that. And then we put in the medical waste separated. After we collect all the medical waste, it's actually for mask. And then we can go to the nearby um, hospital or yeah, small hospital because they have their own waste management for medical waste. So this is the simple tip. And then lastly, I hope that you enjoy my presentation. We should think about the cost distancy in the environment can bring the balance between human and also nature. So uh, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you for your listening also. And please, I'm happy to contact. Um, this is my contact. Um, in Instagram, you can connect me in Instagram. Uh, in Ranitya Nurlita or my link tree, Ranitya Resume, just yeah, contact me. I'm happy to share and I'm I'm happy to discuss. Thank you so much. I hope this uh, my answer is yeah. I hope you get I my have, answer. I have a uh, question to add. Like, I'm really sorry for this, but uh, so the say for example the one that we are not allowed to use cost about uh, $5 per, per kg, let's say, for example, hypothetically. Whereas the recyclable or the good quality one, which we are telling them to use, cost about $20. So uh, why does a vendor use that? Because for them, he or she cannot charge you more. If, if they're for vegetable or something, they charge you more, then you won't pay as a customer because earlier you were paying uh, X amount of money. Now they're charging you more because the plastic is it's more expensive. So this happened with us and what, what was the result was that uh, they ended up using uh, same, same bad plastic through the black market channels, which was not good. And the government was cracking down on them. But in the end, it made sense for them. It was cheaper and it did, it solved the purpose. So how do you convince the most grassroots level people not to use plastic? Sorry, can you repeat your question? Yeah, so I'm saying how do, you, yeah, how do you convince the most grassroots people not to use plastic? <laughs> yeah, actually it is very, very hard question when we educate grassroots. <laughs> so it's same with me. Uh, because like the grassroots people level, they don't care like what plastic happened and then they throw away the plastic to the the river or something because they think that what should I eat for tomorrow, right? So um, actually our target is for not grassroots level because if we talk with grassroots level, so we will also talk with economic levels. So actually for ASEAN reusable bag campaign, uh, our target group is for more youth and then for um, and then for the people who educate at least graduate from university, they, they get some knowledge about the plastic and also the pollution. And then, yeah, so actually we not, not get to grassroots level because it's very hard to, to tell them, of course. Yeah, I, actually this is also fairly challenge, challenging with us. Uh, yeah, maybe we can talk later and then we can also talk with another expertise. Yeah, I have some of the recommendations who work with the grassroots. So maybe we can talk later for this. Okay. So yeah. uh, thank you so much, uh, Ranitya and Ravi, for your questions. So uh, okay. So I think some of you already uh, want to share about what you already discussed uh, with your small groups. So after I, I want to inform you um, before maybe you get boring, but you know what? After you sharing about uh, what ideas uh, you already share with your groups, then. I will introduce you to our newest program called Futures Plus. 
So before that, let's get started. Um, so I want uh, one representative for, from each group to uh, explain about uh, what you already discussed. Maybe I want to start from um, Anissa Migyasari. So uh, are you going to share or is there anyone from your group going to share uh, what's going on in your community and uh, what initiative uh, do you have or any ideas that you can suggest for this issue? Okay, hi, yes. Um, yeah. So basically we're in the group of three, but I guess uh, we're only two of us with Jin from Singapore. Yeah. So uh, both of us uh, actually have similarities, but also have different um, issues here. For example, um, from the Jin's case in Singapore, there is some problem with the uh, segregating ways and there is a contamination it's not about the um, infrastructure. So basically, uh, it's already built um, the infrastructure, but because of the willingness to recycle or to segregate the waste and also the knowledge of waste types, so that's why it's kind of make the, um, most of the people hesitate to do that. And uh, besides, there's also like littering um, on the beach or um, yeah, some, some places like that and then um, from my perspective because I'm uh, assisting the local community especially for the indigenous community in eastern part of Indonesia and you already know that it's kind of remote places and yeah. also uh, the culture is very dif uh, different with us so I guess our main problem is um, the basic education and also our mindset so I cannot say that it is uh, represent all Indonesia, but uh, I only see this from my perspective as I'm assisting the uh, indigenous local community uh, or marg marginalized community. And also, um, if I should mention, there is no uh, proper dumpster on the island because our government on the uh, local, uh, it's not really responsible well, I cannot say all of the governmental organization, but then um, on the island, uh, there's no dumpster, final dumpster. So our community always uh, like through or just litter everywhere. And for example, they will just uh, go to the final uh, dumpster into the ocean. And then it's kind of our dilemma. And then, um, so I will just put together in here in one sentence like, uh, Jin and I already discussed that uh, we need to learn and we need to give example and then it can go hand in hand and then also we need uh, some support um, either from the government from these other stakeholders or um, any kind of um, support systems that we need to make like um, in one page uh, understand so um, it can go very differently every places because it's kind of uh, multi-layered so we cannot say like okay uh, you already knew how the waste management system is and then we cannot say something like that for uh, my local community on the island so uh, like Ranitia already mentioned so we gonna uh, implement this in the grassroots because uh, they have different or specific targets so that's why if we want to say this into uh, the grassroots community, we need to educate them first. At least we give them example. So yeah, it will take very long time, but then, well, we'll still working on it. Thank you. Thanks, Anissa Megasari for sharing and what an interesting uh, discussions uh, between Jean and Anissa Megasari. Yeah. So um, is there anyone also want to share maybe uh, is going to share. Is there anyone from your uh, groups? Yes, share? maybe. Yeah, uh, uh, I have uh, two minutes left to join my yeah, finals competition yeah, that yeah. I leave right now. We can understand because uh, Rani tonight is uh, quite busy with uh, her final teaching uh, for the inner days. So it's okay, Corinthia. We wish you all the best, and uh, yeah, we're, we're sure that yeah, you can do your best. 